Hello, my name is Michael Reed. Starting the 2nd of August, I will be teaching a foundation level course in Vedic astrology. This will give you the basics to do chart interpretation as per the Vedic system of astrology. And I thought today I would touch on how I'm splitting the course up and giving you a little bit of background on some of the things that we will be going over during this course. Um, anyone from beginner level to advanced can take this course. If you think you already know everything about this, well, you can go back and you can build upon the foundation because there's always more to learn about the planets. There's always more to learn about the signs and there's always more to learn about the houses and always more to learn about the aspects, right? So I thought I would touch first on what we're going to be covering during the first semester of the course, which will be comprised of an introduction to the Vedic system of astrology explaining what makes it such a unique system, what indeed makes it a profound system for self-development as well as prediction. Um, after that, we'll cover the planets, understanding the planets on a very deep level. I'm going to go back over each of these so you can know about this, but just touching on the um, bullet points, so to speak, at first. Then after the planets, we're going to, going to cover the uh, signs, also known as the Rashis. After the Rashis, we'll cover the nakshatras or the lunar mansions. Then we'll move on to the houses, also known as the bhavas. After that, we'll focus on the different aspect systems and how to use those. And then the planetary periods, known as vimshotri dasha periods. And after that, we'll focus on the divisional charts, right? So the planets, starting with the planets. The planets in Vedic astrology are called grahas because they seize upon the individual. They grasp the individual and cause them to act in a certain manner. And we're going to cover the different functions of the planets, of which you know, grasping upon the individual is but one particular aspect of it. The other things that planets do is they are producers of specific events in our lives. Um, from this, they are called karakas, which means a, a producer, so to speak. They can be related to a particular area of a person's life, such as Jupiter can represent children. Jupiter can also represent income. Uh, Jupiter can be associated with a particular area of a person's chart by ruling over that area. And because it's associated with that area, it can create an event as per that particular area of the chart, right? So planets can produce things. After that, we're going to talk about planets as causing things, right? So once the planets create something in our life, that thing takes on a life of its own, such as Venus can be related to our vehicles. So let's say the moon, by where it's associated with in the person's chart, has actually created a vehicle for the person. Well, then that vehicle taking on a life of its own can cause different things to happen in a person's life. And so then we can understand the planets as causing things. And as I've already mentioned, the planets tend to grasp upon our consciousness. They influence us in a specific way and make us act according to their influence in our particular chart. After we cover the planets, we're going to cover the signs, which in Vedic astrology are called the Rashis. Now, the Rashis represent particular fields in a person's life. For instance, Aries is significant of the head. Taurus can be significant of the face. Uh, the signs are also associated with particular elements, as in Aries can be fiery. Um, Pisces can be watery. Uh, Gemini can be airy, uh, Virgo can be earth-oriented. So that's another way that the Rashis are particular fields in a person's life. They are also associated with different areas. Um, signs can rule things like mountains, um, cities, things along those lines. The other thing that the Rashis do is they condition the planets. Planets will behave in different manners dependent upon which signs they are in. Additionally, the Rashis connect the planets to the houses, also known as bhavas. And what the bhavas are is they are the particular areas of a person's life 
that an event will be created in. It's where consciousness is playing itself out. That's what the bhavas are associated with. We will also cover the nakshatras in this course. And what the nakshatras do is they cause the planets and the consciousness of the planet to grow in a particular way. And therefore, they also cause the individual and the individual's consciousness to grow in a particular manner. After we cover those things in the first semester and early on in the second semester, we're going to move on in terms of looking at how the planets can influence each other by aspect. We'll learn both uh, the Tajika aspects, which are familiar to most Western astrologers, such as the square, trine, things along those lines. We'll also learn a, what's called the Parashara system of aspects, in addition to Jaimini aspects, which is a completely different school of aspects where it's not actually the planets that are aspecting, but the signs aspecting each other, or I should say the Rashis aspecting each other. After that, we'll take a look at the planetary periods, also called the Dasha periods, in particular the Vimshotari Dasha period. And what the Dasha periods do is they bring a uh, particular karma to fruit at a particular time in a person's life. In order to fine tune a lot of what's going on through this, we'll also learn the divisional charts. The divisional charts take zodiac signs and they carve them up into different portions. The Navamsha chart will carve a sign up into nine equal portions. The Navamsha chart being related to long-term relationships and a person's purpose. The Dashamsha chart will split a sign up into ten portions. And the Dashamsha related to the great things a person can accomplish. The Dashamsha is important to look at in terms of career. So this will give us an idea of how things are more finely tuned in these particular areas. So these are the, the uh, points that we're going to cover during this foundation level Vedic astrology course. And I am offering partial scholarships to a limited number of people who are sincere about wanting to learn Vedic astrology. You can contact me through my website. There's a contact, uh, a contact page, and you can see the link along the top of the website uh, when you go to AuthenticAstrology.com. There's a contact link, and you can contact me if you're interested in one of these scholarships. I should mention they are limited to a few number of individuals at first. So that's going to do it for our brief look at what's going to be covered in my foundation-level Vedic astrology course. Take care.